this began for us in the, the era of apartheid in South Africa where we began to use the leverage of our investments in corporations to help bring about democratic reforms in South Africa. The initial positive response to the series came from a hearty band of small companies, small at least by Fortune 500 standards, with annual sales from a few million to a few hundred million dollars. We get twice as much lumber out of the same log today that we did 30 years ago. We had a, a company that wanted to do the right thing and uh, we had a group of environmentalists and environmentally responsible investors saying, whoa, that's terrific. Where things became more difficult is when we reached out to oil companies and electric utilities and steel companies. Well, the issue of, of why series and, and why we began our relationship with them goes back to uh, the early 1990s when we were re essentially restructuring and rethinking about uh, the whole corporation. We ended up uh, uh, getting a synergistic effect that uh, was extraordinarily beneficial to us. That series was distinctive in three areas. First of all, that series promoted, created a form of stakeholder dialogue which was really not available anywhere else. This quality of collaborative dialogue was rare. It required some history and some trust. Secondly, we embraced vigorously our identity as the leading proponent of standardized environmental reporting. And then the third thing was being a catalyst for change. And interestingly, this came out of our conversations with companies. When we said, why do you stay involved with Ceres? They said, this is a catalyst for internal change. It helps transform our cultures. Now we've learned that it's difficult to go to a new company and say, get involved with Ceres and your culture will be changed because very few companies recognize at the outset that that's something that they wish to do. Mark my words, none of these companies did this simply because they believed in the environment. They could make a very strong and cogent argument inside and to their board about why it served the business interests of the company. And in, in a strange way, I trust that more than simply we convinced them that it was the environmentally responsible thing to do. Last year we had a transaction in the Middle East, $1.2 billion petrochemical plant uh, very credit worthy. Uh, we declined to go in that deal because it exceeded uh, the World Bank emission guidelines by nine times. You know, not, not a little bit, but just enormous. So our people in London declined it, said so we don't want our name on that. Now, let me tell you what that did for the environment. It did nothing, absolutely zero for the environment. Three of the biggest New York banks did the deal. The, trend, the thing is being built as we speak. The existence of international standards or international guidelines on what is acceptable environmentally and what is not uh, is, is absolutely critical. Accepted means accepted by the business community, by the environmental community, and by the governments involved. If the standards don't exist for certain industries, uh, or if they're not accepted by all parties, uh, then we have nothing to hang our hat on. We tried to find an agreement, and we're probably not, never going to get everybody satisfied. But at least From the beginning, series mix of shareholders and environmentalists necessarily had a mixed agenda. We wanted companies to accept a strong environmental commitment, but going out of business as a result was not part of the equation. In a worldwide, highly competitive market economy, the link between reporting and standards would be critical to creating a level playing field where responsibility and accountability were the rule. As Ceres entered its second decade, it took the lead in developing a global initiative focusing both on reporting and standards and widening the scope to a higher vision of sustainability. This conference represents a landmark in bringing together such a distinguished group from so many constituencies and disciplines around the world for this purposeful dialogue. Our gathering here is an artifact of globalization. That process has, of course, created enormous wealth. But it has not necessarily created equity or fairness. This represents the first step on a long journey as sustainability reporting is a new discipline. It is hoped that the GRI guidelines will help corporations better understand and describe their approach to sustainability. We believe strongly that this is the direction we want to take and this is the organization along which we want to align our thinking and our management. We need a global reporting framework. Reporting is not for reporting's sake. It has a broader goal, and that is, in fact, 
to help us uh, achieve sustainability in the future. Environmental and sustainability reporting has moved from a kind of rare practice to now common practice. It's an emerging as an integral part of corporate accountability, corporate citizenship, and corporate stakeholder engagement. That's all good news. In 1989, Ceres was created out of a confluence of hope and historical need. The need was to refocus our industrial system on what lies below the bottom line. The hope that corporations would honor the planetary resources on which we all depend. Through an active set of principles leading to improved corporate environmental behavior, a widespread acceptance of the need for public accountability, and an unprecedented shift towards collaboration among stakeholders, Siri's first decade directly affected dozens of companies, including some of the largest in the world, and has influenced hundreds more. Not only in the United States, but internationally through the Global Reporting Initiative, Ceres is a critical part of a transition to a sustainable society. Yet where there's hope, there's also challenge. Population, poverty, and greed make any predictions of easy solutions absurd. It'll take vision, leadership, compromise, and a lot of hard work behind the scenes for the story of human stewardship of this small planet to have a happy ending. Will we find a way to bring more companies in this country and in other countries to accept the goals of the series principles and to raise the bar of environmental performance every year until we are confident that the danger to the planet has been slowed, stopped, and reversed? If all the world were peaceful now and forevermore, peaceful at the surface and peaceful at the core all the joy within my heart would be so free to soar and we're living on a living planet circling a living star